common filter. This is like a refresher since we discuss uh, common filter during advanced adjustments. Uh, but it's important uh, to uh, go back to common filter because it is a very useful uh, estimation um, process when we deal with uh, integrating systems. This is the diagram of common filter. It is uh, slightly simplified from the one using adjustments. So consider uh, two epochs, k minus 1 and k, and we have an estimate uh, at epoch k minus 1. So from this estimate, uh, we make a prediction uh, to epoch k by means of a transition model uh, that is going to be represented by a matrix. <coughs> So uh, this uh, transition represents the physics of the whole process that connects epochs k minus 1 and k, and there are no observations involved here. Okay, it's just a mathematical model. <coughs> the observations will be here in the process that we call the correction. Now, the correction uh, is going to be basically... Uh, we are going to form a matrix called innovation, uh, sorry, a vector called innovation that shows a mismatch between observations and the previous estimate. So this is going to correct the prediction, taking it to the, uh, to the place where the estimate will be. Uh, the innovation matrix, uh, sorry, the innovation vector is weighted by a quantity called the gain which basically is going to tell us if the uh, observations uh, can be trusted or not. So again, close to 1, the observations are good. If the gain equals to 0, the whole term is eliminated, and, um, and the estimate will be equal to the prediction. Keywords to understand common filter are prediction and correction. Prediction is based on the mathematical model and the corrections based on the observations, correcting the predicted value. In the jargon of column filter, the vector of parameters is called the state vector. The application of column filter implies that we're using a model that relates the parameter uh, values between two consecutive epochs, and this uh, uh, model is called the transition model. So the transition model is expressed by a transition matrix or a state matrix, which is going to then to connect two uh, consecutive epochs. The transition matrix propagates uh, the previous state towards the following one. And there are several prescriptions for a transition matrix. Uh, it, it either can be deterministic or stochastic. The problem is formulated by two models, the transition model, the observation model. The transition model, also called dynamic model, we have the relationship between two consecutive epochs by means of a transition matrix, and we have an additional term called the transition noise or the system noise, which represents basically the uncertainty associated with the transition, and that's going to be embedded in the covariance matrix of the system noise. The observation model is the parametric model in which we have the addition of a measurement noise which is nothing else but the representation of the uncertainty of the observations, and they will be part of the covariance matrix of the observations. The formulation uh, prediction model, uh, we have the expression that we have seen before, uh, the transition from the previous uh, epoch to the, to the current epoch, and uh, something that we didn't see but is very important is that we can also predict the uh, covariance matrix based on the covariance matrix of the previous estimate. This is nothing else here than a covariance uh, propagation uh, and uh, where the, the transition matrix plays the role of a Jacobian of transformation. And here is the covariance matrix of the transition noise. Um, the uh, correction equation is going to be uh, a correction applied to the predicted value uh, the correction is basically the innovation vector weighted by the gain. Now, the gain is uh, given by this expression here, and the final uh, covariance matrix 
of the parameters uh, can be also computed by this expression. This block diagram represents uh, integration using common filter. <coughs> so uh, we have seen before what happens inside a uh, inertial navigation system, uh, which is inside this block diagram. We have the, uh, the instruments, the gyro and the accelerometers uh, mounted in uh, IMU, and uh, they will give us angular velocity and specific force, which is basically the acceleration and the, uh, the attitude, uh, which will be uh, then integrated in navigation equations. Uh, that would yield for us velocity position. Uh, they also, uh, we have also the acceleration in this case. Uh, if you think in terms of integrating to an external source, uh, which is something new now, we have, for example, position given by GNSS. So the position from GNSS will come uh, to the common filter along with the position and the velocity derived from the, uh, from the accelerations. The law integrated in the common filter is for every epoch this process happens, and you're going to have the common filter estimates, which is going to be our sought for velocity and position. Uh, the, uh, the post processing uh, scheme uh, can be done using uh, a, uh, a smoothing, which is basically a, uh, a uh, low pass filter. Uh, now, the common filter that is going to be uh, a, a feedback loop uh, from the common filter uh, to a feed navigation equations. So let's uh, say a few words about GNSS inertia integration. <clears throat> there are two types of integration. One is called the loosely coupled, the other is called the tightly coupled. Loosely coupled uh, is basically when the final parameters as given as determined by GPS and by uh, INS uh, feed a common filter. Uh, tightly coupled uh, is when the measurements themselves feed the common filter. Uh, the advantages of integration between GNSS and inertia are various. First of all, uh, the inertial navigation system provides navigation solution uh, whenever uh, GNSS can't. For example, obstructions, interference, jamming. Uh, also, a INS will uh, provide solution real time at rates much higher than those that a GNSS receiver can provide. Uh, the INS will uh, provide the full navigation solution uh, three translational and three rotational uh, solution, the DOF, degrees of freedom, without differentiation. GNSS solution used to derive accelerations by differentiation or compute attitude parameters. So uh, GNSS allows online calibration of MU errors. Uh, remember the drift. Uh, the alignment of IMU platform can also be uh, estimated and the correction of errors in the uh, INS state. So the optimum integration reduces the effect of GPS error. So um, what happens then is that the uh, GNSS benefits, uh, the, uh, provides benefits to the uh, INS by means of calibration. So uh, here we, we can think that the GPS will be provided the position updates. Uh, the benefits that uh, INS provides to GNSS is timely reacquisition. So if there is an obstruction uh, and uh, when the uh, GNSS uh, takes, uh, the, uh, retakes the observation to the satellites, uh, it will be at a point that they, it has the position as given by the inertial navigation system. So I have a very simple diagram here that shows that, uh, shows the, how the drift can be, uh, uh, can be corrected. So this is the INS uh, solution uh, for a uh, position that uh, should be around the uh, horizontal axis. So GNSS uh, is, uh, has no drift, 
but it's uh, slightly noisier and the INS solution is smoother. So um, now we have the second diagram in red. We have uh, position updates uh, provided uh, uh, by, the gen by the GNSS and used by the INS. So what we have is the benefit of uh, correcting the uh, smoother solution uh, of the INS uh, by the GPS. So there is much more to be talked about GNSS integration, but uh, this is a, uh, a, a good starting point.